Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. You are tuning in to The Chocolate Lot, and I'm your host, Alma. And today, I want to get straight to it because there is so much going on. So many different things have happened from Epstein being murdered to now this NFL partnership with Jay-Z, which I feel and deep down believe with my whole heart is complete trash and waste of energy on his part. Now, I first want to drive home this point, my black people. Every time you step outside your door and you go into your roles out there in the society, whether it's a garbage man, whether it's a receptionist, whether it's a server at McDonald's or whatever restaurant, even whether it's whether you're a mother or a father, it don't matter what your role is. You need to be prepared 24 seven to be an activist on the behalf of your fellow black brothers and sisters, period. Because when you are not prepared to be an activist, the whole Jay-Z up there talking about his partnership with the NFL is exactly what you get when you are not mentally prepared to be an activist. Now, we all know Jay-Z had met with the NFL over a year ago and started this partnership with the NFL. And from what it sounds like, he's more doing business on the entertainment end and and providing a platform for the NFL players to speak their mind on injustices and... um, I guess gathering up artists and such to put on a wonderful, you know, halftime show. And I have to think to myself, Jay-Z is not a businessman. He is an entertainer that also does business. And when I was looking at the clip, as most of you have, of him in that room being interviewed and you know Charlemagne asking him the questions and all these different reporters I couldn't help but think to myself is Jay-Z up there as a businessman or is he up there as an entertainer and this is what I mean when I say we have to be mentally prepared to speak our truth my fellow black people we have to always be ready to call out injustice no matter what it is no matter how small it is because if you don't have that mindset and you don't have it already pre-made up that you're going to do that then you're going to be robbed of good opportunities jay-z had a wonderful opportunity to actually implement and demand for change the, the NFL is laughing at us right now. They're laughing. Colin Kaepernick did his thing with the kneeling and did some financial damage. That's how you're supposed to do when you're trying to make a movement in a statement. You're supposed to affect these men's pockets. That's how things get done. Things don't get done until the pockets are affected. And Colin Ka- uh, Kaepernick did his due diligence and he did just that. And, and Jay-Z, what he was supposed to do is go in there like a boss and demand for change that were supposed to be for black people and piggybacking off of what Colin Kaepernick has been standing up for this whole time. I mean, this even Colin Kaepernick is still being affected. The man can't even go to work. He settled, yes, but he wants to play football. Will they let him know? So that goes to show you just how corrupt the NFL still is, that they're still blackballing our brother Colin Kaepernick. Jay-Z should have gone in there and first thing he should have demanded is for Colin Kaepernick to receive a job or at least an upgrade in position for the for even just the simple fact that he stood up for us as a brother now what Jay-Z did was very selfish indeed very very selfish 
because he's thinking about his own pockets. He's not thinking for the good of the people. He's not thinking about what opportunities this is going to uh, create for our fellow generations to come that want to go into the NFL or whatnot. The NFL is a, a huge attraction. It's, it attracts from all corners of the globe. Anybody who tunes in that wants to see sports, yes. But it's all, it also sets the stage for things that ap- actually happen in society, like a rippling effect. You know? The NFL is, uh, when you watch the game, it's almost like a mini plantation. You have the players that majority are black because it's no secret that black men especially are strong and extremely athletic and almost like God's warriors. Heck, they are. And you see the owners are always white men. There's no black owners. You always see, you know, everyone cheering, looking at the the players like gladiators and you know, the players can't do nothing but gladiate. They can't even speak their intelligence, can't show their culture, can't speak up for the uh, oppression that's going on for their communities or else they get punished. They get blackballed, they get kicked out, fired, you name it. So, and, and it's been proven time and time again, what happens in sports, it typically sets the stage for what happens in the real world the nfl is just a mini plantation in the great plantation okay now jay-z you know he's talking with these the nfl owners you know the businessmen and he's not demanding for anything we're talking about men who have the money to be able to put a man in presidential office. And we all know that the president is always backed financially. Someone has to financially back them. Someone has to influence the president somehow. Like money talks. And you know, there's no demands. No demands made. No solutions provided. He should have gone in there you know, not just demanded for the justice of, of Colin, but he could have, you know, demanded for opportunities for our brothers, for people to become owners of these teams. He could have demanded for change, you know, within the structure of the whole NFL, you know, where our, our brothers, you know, they get reprimanded for dressing like a year, um, dressing like themselves and forced to dress like a European man. He could have demanded for things that such as uh, reparations for black folks he could have set the stage for that you know the the reparations movement is already enacted but he could have taken it to another level completely and he he clearly his mindset was not there and so in in the nfl they have been looking for an opportunity to bring in more uh, viewers, bring back their money, be able to look for an opportunity to silence Colin Kaepernick or to drive away the whole Cap- uh, Colin Kaepernick and separate it from the NFL. They've been looking for something like this. They've been looking for a Jay-Z, a mascot, a face that would drive black people toward it and away from their finances. And you know, we cannot allow for this to be the finale movement, you know, and and put the cap on what Colin Kaepernick has done. We just cannot allow for that to happen. And even Colin, uh, the celebrities and Colin Kaepernick and his girlfriend have come out and denounced their support as far as Jay-Z's recent movement. And we have to keep in mind the goals here we have to remember what our struggle is black folks we have to remember that this society which is daily reminding us that we are black which is daily you know trying to damper us from becoming successful becoming owners because they know if we become owners then we'll have the keys to resources 
They're, they're continually trying to deprive us and rob us of resources, keep us uneducated, poison us in efforts to keep us on the bottom. And every ethnic group is complicit in it. And we have got to remember what it is we're fighting for. And remember, we can't wait for these other groups to fight for us. We have to fight for ourselves. That's why I say when you go out in the world, you better have your mind made up as far as what your values are, what your purpose is, and what you stand for. Don't walk out there with no opinions because that's what get men killed. Having no opinions and no idea on what's going on. You need to stay educated. If you don't have access to education, well, you better tune in to the, uh, the newspaper and the media and find out what's going on. Talk to your fellow brothers and sisters who have wisdom and pre-make up your mind to be an activist when it, when it comes to black plight and black justice. Because we remember with the Brown versus Board of Education, that whole initiative was supposed to um, not actually have integration. It was supposed to provide equal resources toward blacks. But instead, they came out with the initiative of integration, which was actually a white man's dream because then they could continue to not only have our resources, but to be able to keep their, their foot on our necks. And so a lot of people have always looked at that as a mistake. And so we can't undo what was done, but what we can do is stand up for what we deserve and what we are owed. And so, you know, when you go out there and you see someone harming your brother or sister, you stand up for your brother or sister. You call out the injustices that you see. Don't be afraid. And just like how if you're going to do CPR and save a man or woman's life, that needs to be pre-meditated. You can't just um, expect yourself to, to be in the action and doing, you know, saving somebody's life. You have to have made up your mind that if you come across a situation like that, that you're going to save that person's life. So it comes with the mentality. So you know, and, and as far as people saying, oh, you know, just wait and see. We don't know what the master plan is. Bullshit. There should be no let's wait and see. It's already been declared what Jay-Z is doing. It's already been declared. And, you know, the the whole um, NFL thing is trying to put out this thing of, oh, he's part owner. Part owner is nothing. Okay. And also... Just because you're up there and you're, you know, um, leveling up and you're doing good for yourself and your family does not mean that that is truly opening the gates for somebody else. Look at Obama. You think they're going to put a, a black man in office soon after Obama? Are you kidding me? That's why Trump got in office to begin with, because they were like another Negro. Hell no. So, you know, we have to learn as a people how to bring our people up as we rise. You know, just becoming an owner isn't going to do it because guess what? All eyes are on you watching every move you make. You have to find a way to get up to ownership and be able to bring your people up with you. And not just, you no, know, we don't want to just live vicariously to someone who's successful. We want to be able to go through open doors to get to that point and to have a better way of living for ourselves too. So, you know, this is the thing when it comes to success. This is why they say when you become educated, you're responsible for educating your people and pulling them up with you. So that's all I got to say on this before my blood pressure gets gets high and rolling if it's not already up there. You know, we have to come with the mindset of being activists every time we step out the door. Because remember, when you walk out the door, this black don't rub off, honey. It's on you. And everything you do, every move you make, no matter how good you are, how qualified you are, people look at your color first. That's why you have a lot of 
qualified sisters out here not getting the opportunities that they are due or the jobs that they have worked hard for because those employers still look at skin color and we have to not be afraid we have to not be afraid we have to not just look for and this is why the NFL felt like they could put a Jay-Z up there and think everything was going to be okay because there is this false notion that in black society there has to be a leader there does not have to be a leader okay there does not have to be an individual like a Martin Luther King or a Malcolm X every generation there could be multiple Martin Luther Kings multiple Malcolm X's multiple multiple leaders people with leader mentality on the forefront making decisions that are collectively beneficial to black people as a group so this is why you know these nfl white people of the elite felt like like they could get away with something like this because they're so used to us seeing uh going behind one person instead of looking at us as a group Okay, you see all these other groups, be them Asian or whatever, you don't see, you know, a face when you think of them. You look at them collectively. That's how we need to be viewed collectively. And everything we need to do needs to be collectively. That's why they say when you go out there in the world, you represent not just yourself, you represent your family, you represent whatever skin color you're a part of. That's why when we go out there and we're, you know, whether it's to the mall, you look your best. You present yourself in the best possible way because other people are watching. Other groups are watching. And how you represent yourself is how people will treat not only you, but others like you. And what what do I mean by that in more depthitude? If someone, you know, you see all these Asian owners particularly Asian men beating up on our black women. You know why that is? That's because you don't see a lot of our black brothers standing up against these Asian men and these Asian owners beating the crap out of our black women. Because I bet you if they saw that, then these incidences would stop in a heartbeat. So how you uphold yourself, brother, how you uphold yourself, sister, is how you dictate in a, uh, people to treat you what's that saying um, how you treat others is how uh, they will treat you in return so give it your best every day you know put on the mindset that you're, you're gonna you know be positive change that you're gonna have the the perception to do good for your black people that you're going to have the mindset to be an activist and call out injustice when you see it especially for your black brothers and sisters don't ever forget that all right let's stop playing these menstrual shows all right we're not just around to be entertaining people for their pleasure i walk into salons like uh you know nail salons which are always asian owned and majority asian employed and i see our music being displayed on the on the tv screens for you know the customers to view and the vibe is real black and cultured black but we don't get treated appropriately you see what I'm saying? Like, it's like people love to cultural appropriate and utilize our talents and look at us as entertainment, but no one wants to look at us as human beings and people that deserve to be treated equally as human beings. So don't wait for these other groups to get it. All right, let me tell you, they already got it because if they didn't, they wouldn't be treating you the way they're treating you. All right. So don't wait for them to do something. We have to be the change. And that's my last word of the day, my fellow black brothers and sisters. ADOS support all day. Let's uh, not let this move get us down. 
and let's just use it look at it and use it as an example to for us to empower ourselves and to make sure that we're not up there stammering and stuttering and putting on um, and letting ourselves be used by these um, white supremacists okay and let's start calling it for what it is white supremacy all right love y'all thank you for tuning in to the chocolate lot until we talk again peace